Hi there. Today we are talking about probability distributions in risk analysis. This is one of the chapter you're going to get a lot of questions in the RMP exam um, on this. I faced my RMP exam and I saw, you know, few of the logs and stuff like that. It was, um, you must know this particular uh, chapter. So, uh, first of all, let's understand what is probability distribution and how is it important vis-a-vis -vis risk analysis and uh, managing risk. Uh, first of all, let's understand what is random variable. There are some key concepts which you, you should know before we move further. There is a concept of random variable, probability and the function which decides on probability distribution. Uh, so it is called PDF. So what is a random variable? Random variable is a variable that can take different values, each with different possibility. Think of it as a way to represent outcomes of a random process. Um, so let's take an example. So think about you are rolling a dice. So you flip the coin and then you either get a head or a tail. Um, so it is heads right now. Then you again, um, you know, flip the coin and then it would get a tail. So this is one way of uh, understanding that this is, a, you know, distinct values. We know these values beforehand and we can presume that there could be only few outcomes like head and tails or when you think about um, rolling a dice. So let me take another example of rolling a dice. We know that this dice has uh, six sides. So if you roll, what's going to come? It would have either a six, it would have either a one or a three and so on. So, But we know the predict predictable outcomes beforehand. So that is discrete random variable. However, the word does not goes like this. There could be another type of variables which are continuous. Um, here, one, we don't know what could be, um, you know, there could be in decimals. Uh, second, we don't know the range. It can increase, it can decrease and so on. The example would be height of a student in a class. Uh, the probability of finishing on time in, you know, for, for a particular task and so on. So these are continuous um, random variable. It could be four days, it could be 4.2 days, or it could be 4.1 day and so on. Let's understand what is probability. Probability is a measure of how likely an event is to occur. So um, zero is impossible, it won't occur. And when it's certain, it's going to happen. Um, so in, when we talk about risk, we talk about probability. How probable is the risk? Um, the key concept here you should know is experiment an action or a process that leads to one or several outcomes like rolling a dice, event, when a specific outcome happens, when a risk happens. Probability of event, um, it is calculated as what is that which we want. I want a six to come in when I roll out a dice. So the probability of rolling out dice for a four number four would be how many faces it have. So it has six faces. So one divided by six, it would be somewhere around 0 0.167. So that is the probability. Now, when we talk about probability, we also talk about different type of distributions and different type of equations. A function describes how probabilities are distributed over values of random variable. For example, um, for a six-sided die, the outcome of x or six to come or any x to come, x could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, would be 1 divided by 6. It is called distribution function and you can use it. Different probabilities would have different distribution function. Different type of probabilities would have different distribution functions. Um, so there are different distributions. So there is discrete distribution and there are continuous distributions. 
I'm getting too detailed into it. Don't worry about it. Discrete is when you get one or two or, you know, probable outcomes are known. And these are integer in numbers. Uh, for example, rolling a dice, um, then flipping a coin. All of these are discrete. You know it's going to happen. It's going to happen in entirety. Um, however, there are continuous distribution, which you see, uh, you know, in general, in project management, you're going to see this all the time. Continuous distributions are, um, they are like, you know, how much delay going to be there in a project activity, um, how much likely duration is going to finish, four hours or four days or 4.2 hours and so on i give you an example so these are continuous distribution we use them in manufacturing or we, we let's understand the kind of distributions we have first um, so normal distribution is very simple to understand it is symmetrical like a bell it has mean medium and mode all of them are same and it is controlled by two things, the average and the spread, standard deviation. Uh, so this is normal distribution. Generally, um, whenever I manufacture something, I would want it to take a shape of normal distribution. Most of the time, I would want to aspire for this. And anything which goes beyond is, um, you know, the standard deviation. So when I'm making, let's say, a pizza, the pizza or a cheese or a pizza diameter i want the diameter to be all the time this mean but there could be some kind of abnormality or some kind of things which may happen and the pizza may change its size to slightly bigger or smaller all of those are standard deviation we measure that in um, manufacturing i'll give you an example and how do we measure that when we think about manufacturing manufacturing something which you do it day day in day out so that's normal distribution then there is a lo log normal distribution what is it it is positively skewed that means it can never go in negative never ever so is in case i look at a normal distribution it goes under negative values as well um, log normal distribution always goes in positive it would never be negative only positive values are allowed um, defined by mean and standard deviation of the log of the variable so this is the mean and the standard deviation it could be skewed like this or it could be skewed like this um, it could be at you know so so where do we use that we use that um, by looking at things which always would have a positive value which can fluctuate over a period of time there is a inconsistency or risk or probability involved so for example stocks um, for example battery life of a vehicle inconsistency in the battery life of a vehicle would be smaller but over a period of time it may change so we can create a log normal distribution equation and then see how this variable going to perform over a period of time. Then um, we have triangular distribution. It is defined by three points, minimum, most likely and maximum. Uh, very, very simple. All three can happen at any point of time. So we use it in project management wherein we say, okay, most likely or um, this is pessimistic scenario, this is optimistic scenario and this is most likely scenario. And we say, okay, what is the probability of happening X event? Then we say, okay, because the this is triangular, that means most likely plus pessimistic plus optimistic divided by 3. That's a normal triangular distribution to know um, if we're working on what is the probable duration or what is the probable cost of a particular task or a particular WBS item. Then let's talk about beta distribution. A beta distribution like, you know, chameleon of distribution. It is very flexible and may take different shapes. 
um, it is generally defined by two variables alpha and beta there are different calculations for alpha and beta you don't have to get into details of how do we arrive at alpha and beta but your stats guy is gonna be able to give you that so when we talk about a beta distribution it may be skewed you know optimistic most likely and pessimistic here and then we calculate the expected duration or expected cost by looking at because most likely going to happen more the times of it would be much more so we say okay expected duration would be um expected duration would be optimistic plus four times most likely plus pessimistic divided by six that's how we calculate in project management the expected duration of a task or a wbs item or um, expected cost using pert analysis what is pert you should know the full form of pert so how where do we use it we use um, all of these patterns in predicting the future risk management and everyday decision making if i talk about industry application in manufacturing we use normal distribution for quality control how do i use it um we use something like control charts and we have a mean to look at and then we say okay what is upper control um, limit and what is lower control limit these are the um, allowable limits or um, these are the three sigmas sigmas is what the standard deviation so we say okay let's try and see you know how my process is performing anything which goes beyond three sigma or you know to begin with it could be three sigma and then we narrow it down so anything beyond um, lcl or any observation beyond ucl would would require you to look at why the observation was outside the permitted limits why, because our aim is to create predictable outcomes our aim is to have uh, if there is a size of door 9 by 5 feet it has to be 9 by 5 feet we want to be near the mean as much as possible so we look at um the example of you know looking at all of this is uh, using a normal distribution in manufacturing log normal distribution can be used in finance we look at you know what is the stock value would it gonna go down would it gonna go up looking at its predictability in the past we can predict the future plus we can have few more um, attribute of you know how the industry is performing how the stock was performing if there are new things which you know which which has come up management changes and so on you can put that and come out with your future forecast triangle distribution as i told you has three things and we use it in project management to come out with expected duration or expected cost uh, similarly for beta distribution we use pert um, you know the um, example how do we calculate in pert we multiply most likely with four times and the expected duration or expected cost becomes four times multiplied with most likely plus optimistic plus pessimistic divided by 6 um so different field require different distributions it help us to make decisions when we have unpredictability in the future if you have more questions on this you can talk to me at help at kavitasharma.net or put comments in the channel and i should be able to respond thank you for listening in my name is kavita sharma saying you bye bye